Lockheed Martin's famed SR-71 Blackbird may be among the most iconic airframes of the Cold War, but this incredibly fast design wasn't always intended to serve only as a high-flying set of eyes. In fact, a variant of the SR-71's predecessor program, the faster and higher flying A-12, actually had a fighter interceptor sibling in the form of the YF-12, and eventually, in theory at least, the F-12B. While the A-12 had been designed specifically to serve as a viable replacement for the high-flying but much slower-moving U-2, the U.S. Air Force was also on the hunt for a new fighter that could replace the F-106 Delta Dart interceptor. While the Delta Dart was designed to be the ultimate interceptor, the rapidly advancing aviation technology erupting from think tanks on both sides of the Iron Curtain soon made it clear that the F-106's Mach 2.3 top speed wasn't quite as ultimate as it had seemed at its inception. Like so many forward-reaching aircraft to come about during the Cold War, the F-106's biggest problem was falling behind the curve of ever faster, ever more capable aircraft. With the ever-looming threat of long-range Soviet nuclear bombers, the U.S. Air Force knew they needed a high-speed interceptor they could task with closing with and destroying bombers before they could ever reach American targets. However, America's involvement in the Vietnam War made funding difficult to come by. The Defense Department first believed the Mach 3-capable North American XF-108 Rapier would be a worthy successor to the F-106, but rising development costs amid the ongoing conflict prompted the program's cancellation. Now, with no Mach 3 interceptors in development at all, Lockheed's famed designer Kelly Johnson proposed a variant of their A-12 ox cart that could carry an air-to-air -air missile payload. While the A-12 was technically being developed for the CIA, the U.S. Air Force was interested and placed an order for three of these super-fast, high-flying intercept fighters. The biggest changes Lockheed made to create the YF-12 out of its A-12 sibling were mostly at the front of the aircraft, where a second cockpit was added for a fire control officer who was tasked with managing the interceptor's air-to-air -air arsenal. The nose was also modified to accommodate a Hughes ANASG-18 fire control radar that had actually been developed for use in the defunct XF-108 program. The new nose had a negative effect on the aircraft's stability, so ventral fins were added to the underbelly to offset this change. But the most important change between the A-12 and the YF-12 came in the four bays designed originally to house powerful cameras, film, and other reconnaissance equipment. One of those four bays was converted to house that fire control equipment, while the others were modified to house an internal payload of three Hughes AIM-47 Falcon air-to-air -air missiles. Lockheed produced three YF-12A prototypes built to demonstrate the platform's capability as a high-speed interceptor that the U.S. could really count on to hunt down and destroy Soviet bombers. The first took to the sky in August of 1963, and by 1965, the aircraft already held several records, including one for speed at 2,070 miles per hour, or nearly Mach 2.7, and another for altitude at 80,257 feet. The YF-12 was the largest and heaviest interceptor on the planet, but it was also the fastest. During this span of time, the YF-12 was actually the first of this lineage of aircraft to be announced to the public. President Lyndon B. Johnson revealed the YF-12's existence on February 24, 1964, but it's important to remember that that revelation came in part to support keeping the A-12 under an ongoing shroud of secrecy. With the public and really the whole world now aware that the defensively oriented YF-12 was under development, testing could continue on the A-12 under a shroud of secrecy. After all, the A-12 was intended to fly deep into enemy territory, snapping pictures of the Soviet's nuclear program, all while using the same basic design and propulsion systems to outrun Soviet defenses. By May of 1965, the Air Force was officially convinced, and they placed an order for 93 F-12Bs to support the U.S. Air Defense Command. The F-12B was to be a more refined and capable version of the already incredibly capable YF-12A, boasting an increase in range to 1,350 nautical miles over the YF-12's 1,200, 
and improved radar and fire control systems that could locate and track enemy bombers from distances as great as 125 miles. It wasn't just the aircraft itself that looked promising. The Hughes AIM-47 Falcon missiles, also originally designed for the XF-108 program, were among the most advanced air-to-air -air weapons of the era. Based largely on the design for the AIM-4 Falcon missile, the AIM-47 could engage targets at ranges as far as 100 miles, at speeds in excess of Mach 4. Only about 80 of these missiles were ever built, with seven total guided launches attempted from the YF-12. Six of those test launches resulted in confirmed kills of drone aircraft, with the propulsion system on the missile failing on the 7th. Despite never seeing operational use, the AIM-47 would go on to serve as the basis for the legendary AIM-54 Phoenix missile that would later rise to fame by adding to the F-14 Tomcat's incredible air-to-air -air capabilities. But it wasn't quite to be. The U.S. Air Force's order for 93 F-12B interceptors was originally placed on hold for three long years, due mostly to the ever-climbing costs of the war in Vietnam. At the same time, the Soviet Union was having new successes with their R-7A intercontinental ballistic missile, a design which was based on the world's first such missile, their own R-7. The introduction of ICBMs into Cold War nuclear posturing meant that the most looming threat was no longer long-range bombers. Now it was missiles. As a result, the YF-12 program was canceled before the first production F-12B could even roll off the assembly line. In January of 1968, the fastest intercept fighter in world history was canceled before it ever found a fight. A total of just three YF-12s were produced for testing. One of them was lost on June 24, 1971, when both pilots had to eject due to an in-flight fire. Another was damaged beyond repair and a landing mishap, but the rear half of the aircraft was salvaged and used to build a static test frame for the SR-71 in what would become to known as the world's only SR-71C. The last remaining YF-12 saw continued use, however, in joint supersonic cruise testing between NASA and the U.S. Air Force until it was ultimately retired to the National Museum of the Air Force at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base back in November of 1979. The YF-12 name would go on to be used once again, however, when the U.S. Air Force loaned an SR-71 to NASA for continued propulsion testing. In order to maintain the secrecy surrounding the SR-71 program at the time, this aircraft was redesignated as a YF-12C and given a fictional serial number just to keep the Soviets guessing. And that'll just about do it for another edition of Sandbox News. I'm Alex Hollings. Make sure you swing by sandboxnews.com today and every day for all the latest in news, entertainment, and motivation from all around the force. If you got anything out of this video, make sure to click like and subscribe down below it, and don't forget to tap on that bell icon so you never miss a drop from Sandbox News.